Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Dying Light has got a brand new, hot new update that kind of nerfs online play for Linux users, but don't worry, there's some Mac love too. And Iron Harvest uh, might not come to Linux, but you know what? At least they're being upfront about it. Google wants to host your games and then shut down the service about two years later. And why should the soundtrack for colonizing Mars be country and Western? Someone should ask Tim Burton. It's Richard Stallman's birthday, or it was. Uh, that's about as relevant to Linux gaming as the flood. And we throw chairs at Crest. Or are we being guided to throw them uh, by some unseen entity? <laughs> I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, um, flipping the bits, switching the switches, bringing you the nightmare fuel joint every week by our tamed Canadian podcaster from Toronto land. One master say he is gorgeous and the man on the island. He is back. Hello. This is Pedro Mateus and together with Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last little bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, lads, we do like to see lads, laddies. Can you do that? Is that racist? I don't know. It's uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's St. Patrick's Day, man. It's fun. Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. Um, okay. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We're not topping that. <laughs> We do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs or we're not being blatantly racist, Pedro. Jeez. <laughs> Look, it, it 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 came out, okay? Well, <laughs> I uh, got to work uh, today, Saturday. Uh, it was nice. Getting up at 6.30, it's like, no, it's Saturday. I should be sleeping some more. And now my legs are uh, threatening to go on strike and not being able to move anymore. So there's that. <laughs> What's up, Jay, baby? I mean, I feel bad for you with me having to do, like, two-hour late-night deployments after Linux Gamecast Ooh. for three years. Ooh. So, I mean, no, you, you you get no sympathy. No, I'm... So, I, I talked about it in the uh, in the pre-pre-super shows in a little bit. I watched my first episode of The X-Files. Like, you ever. did? Yeah. So it, was, it was the one where Raymond's dad has, like, precognitive powers. It's all right. I, I can see why people were into it. It's a pretty good joint. Uh, today, I kind of was just feeling out things because the company that employs me is like, hey, man, we're filing Chapter 11. I was like, oh, all right, let's get the popcorn out and uh, see if we still have a job next week. We don't know. Hopefully we will. It'll be brilliant. But yeah. something we will. You know, Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know who doesn't work? The horse. He's the layabout. <laughs> Mainly because he's dead. Because we beat him to death week after week after week. Steam Linux update. Oh, the oh man, the HTC Vive Pro. It is great for people with glasses, according to Sam Makovic. Yeah. <laughs> Kovac. Kovac. Uh, this is from Ars Technica. Um, apparently, uh, the Ready Player One uh, demo at South by Southwest had some Vive Pros, and this guy checked it out. Uh, the we we knew about the big old resolution bump. What are they? Twenty eight eighty by uh mm -hmm. twelve hundred or sixteen hundred mm -hmm. rather. So appar apparently it's not quite. Oh my god! Virtual reality is the matrix has me yet, but it's getting close. Uh, the headset's also apparently a lot more ergonomically designed, which is good because it's the the Vive headset isn't that heavy. It's just a little awkward to have just sitting on your face constantly. So maybe having additional bracing is better, but. With this ad resolution comes the little caveat that if you take a look at a lot of VR games these days, they're not particularly graphically demanding, but with having to, you know, render fairly high resolution images at 90 frames a second on two screens. Well, I mean, when you think about it, man, I mean, like step one, A, you have to like find a Bitcoin miner, kill them, steal their video cards because you can't afford to get a regular one. And, yep. But you know, yeah, you're right with the lower resolution and... I don't know, man. With the price of this thing, you'd remember it'd be around twelve hundred bucks. It's we were talking this about this a couple of weeks back. Is even as a developer, do you really even target this at this point? Because I just don't see a big, a whole lot of adoption, man. That's, that's no, thing. no, we don't. Especially when it comes to uh, well, us over here in Linux land. Hell, we. Don't really get those many new games. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, VR doesn't really 
mean anything to us. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, unless you're empty. Uh, but spe- yeah. <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Valve has a brand new announcement on the SteamVR uh, page. They got some news. Uh, apparently, uh, for uh, weaker weaker headsets now, our uh, Val- Valve will detect whether or not your headset or your video card is not 100% up to stuff and bump the resolution down so that you can still enjoy your VR titles on a um, on a lower end PC, which is in principle sound or in theory sounds not like a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it it, re- it really does feel like they're kind of hedging their bets with the with the Vive Pro, right? They're kind of. Ex- I'm curious if we're gonna see like um, either a low a lower res headset, like the the Vive Two is like the cheapo version, or like a, just a bunch of cheaply produced Vive Ones try and tease new customers away from oculus because i don't know man i mean Ocul- I, oculus is kind of curb stomping them in terms of price well uh yeah. sony's kind of just laughing at everyone like aha we got more suckers than you guys see how many we sold that people never use anymore um yep you know it it, it looks like it, 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 they're going to be adjusting the super sampling automatically which yeah that that's a really good idea until you get the people who are plugging it into their, they didn't kill enough Bitcoin miners and steal enough cards and they start getting junk. Now, this is something you can disable. That's going to be great. But automatic, automatic out of the box, be like, it looks like crap. And it's like, because you have a junk GPU. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, my 3D effects Voodoo 2 should run it just fine. This is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, no, I did read the bit. It's like, oh, lowering the cost of VR. Oh, yeah, no, you totally won't need to upgrade your GPU if you're running a 1070 or a 1080 because uh, it's not so much as lowering the cost of VR as maintaining the current cost because, yeah, dynamic resolution, super sampling, whatever they're doing, it's going to look at your 1060 and go, yeah, no, sorry, Mm -hmm. that's not good enough. And I'm not entirely sure how that accomplishes the whole lowering of the cost, as it Mm -hmm. were. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be your 3 gig 1060, not your uh, 6 gig 1060, because uh, that, that one's actually, because that one's effectively a 980, so that can, yeah. that can run you some VR. Hmm. Um, but yeah, All right. uh, everyone loves, everyone loves Dota, right? Hey, man. We're, we're all big Dota fans. <laughs> Listen, don't, don't, don't be a dotard. And uh, Dota Plus. Oh, uh, I, gotta, I gotta go look that up in a dictionary. Hey man, it's a monthly subscription service for Valve's Boba. That's right. They want more money from your ass. And uh, <laughs> what is it? Well, it's gonna be like a battle pass. It's a brand new system. It's gonna rent you about three ninety nine. What stinkies a month? You're gonna get access to the returning Battle Cup. I don't know what this shit is. I'm just reading here, so don't shoot me. It'll include hero leveling and let's see what else do we have. Uh, for progress, you get a new thing. You, you're going to be able to earn shards, what the fuck all those are, and it's a new form of currency. It can be used to unlock. So this is, this, this feels like give us more money because fuck you. That's why we were talking earlier, though, is my theory is this is the same thing as a cover charge on a bar. It's kind of keep the riffraff and some of the re out of like tournaments, Jordan. Yeah, no, because uh, part, of, part of this whole um, Dota Plus stuff is that they're going to be having like exclusive weekend tournaments that you can buy your way into for like a buck a tournament. Um, so I guess it's it's the same price as doing week by week, but I guess you don't get all the shards and the benefits and whatnot. I'm curious though um, about those uh, exclusive tournament tournaments and uh, the official ladder rankings because if they're trying to gate people off that a ways, uh, people are not going to be too keen on paying to play for their previously free game, especially if they want to enter the realm of competitive i get but yeah i mean i, I guess competitive or uh, uh cosmetic items not competitive items <laughs> cosmetic items i really uh, make a much bank these days they're they need yeah. they need to start selling hats in dota hats and i was reading like the thing uh dota plus will be an ongoing uninterrupted service filled with features that provide both progression and opportunities for improvement it'll include hero leveling which will allow players to make progress as well as helping them improve by earning shards new form of currency that can be used to unlock rewards so at what point do we just uh drop the pretense and start calling this pay to win dota never no, no, I mean we 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 got to see what they're actually offering, but I'm uh, it uh, it definitely smells a little stanky. 
100%. Yeah. Hey, man, let, let's keep this Dota trainer rolling, baby, because the future is mobile. Valve has Dota 2 and the Source 2 engine running on mobile devices. Other mobile ports are possible. Um, this comes from Eli Hudup, and uh, all this is going to be in our show notes, so you can come check it out later. He got to tour around. He got to play around, sneak around, and they're like, yo, man, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing some... Uh, well, they have Dota up and running on mobile. It's going to be a thing. Uh, but I think one of the interesting things was Valve saying <laughs> controls like a damn nightmare, which, okay, we, we just confirmed Half-Life 3 mobile exclusive. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Something tells me this has everything to do because Valve is known for playing the long game. And oh, yeah. Windows, the Microsofts are definitely 100% coming out trying to launch the Microsoft streaming service. So I think this might tie into point A to point B. They don't want Microsoft getting a cut or becoming a thing. I don't know. Am I crazy? I, well, here's, here's the thing too, is that we're seeing, we're seeing an uptick in like, uh, at least when start in the windows notebook space, we're starting to see some actual like 64 bit arm laptops. So this might actually be valid hedging their bets. Hmm. Maybe we'll actually start seeing some, uh, game distribution for steam on Android. Well, that windows laptop is uh -huh. effectively a Snapdragon. something it's a yeah. the same thing that's in the new Samsung phone. So, yep. I, I, I mean, let's let's be real. They're beefy ass processors. Like for general purpose computing, they're fine. And if you slap a beefy enough GPU with some Vulcan, you can actually probably squeeze out some decent performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and Valve are definitely in a position where they could, if they wanted to, they could uh, easily target the um, the ARM market and have, like Jordan uh, hinted at, uh, the. Android Steam client actually be the Steam client instead of that glorified piece of junk app that they have right now, which barely even works as a storefront. Mm. I mean, I only use it for well, the uh, Steam Guard, but I'd rather have an alternative, to be honest. It, it, it's kind of hilarious, too, because with the amount of Android port, ports that are on Steam, mm -hmm. I might be yeah. like, fuck it, yeah, just, just give us your game, cut out the middleman. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that, man. Yeah. They don't have to worry about giving anyone a cut because, you know, Valve doesn't like doing that. All right. In steamy news, let's get into something I ran into because I was thinking, hey, man, when we get done with our um, Meet the Freeman series, we finished the first part of Dying Light, but we haven't. Uh, what's the second part called, Pedro? The following. The following. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe we can sink our teeth organs into that. Um, let me download it. I'm not going to tell you how quick it downloaded on a half gig connection. It was fantastic. Uh and I ran into this issue. Your game appears to be using modified data. So it was like, no, it's not. Uh, uninstalled everything and reinstalled it. Tried it again. A lot of people are having these this issue uh, on Linux and Mac. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. I mean, I've installed everything. Just tried to install the base game. Same error. Now, what I'm terrified of, this is uh, Techland, right? They make this? Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, like, I, I think we got the enhanced edition of regular, uh, the, the first one, what was it called? Uh, uh, Dead, Dead, Dead Island. Island. Dead Island. Yeah. We got that because some intern went off and did it. Like, we don't even know who made this. That was a legitimate story. So I'm kind of worried on whether or not this will ever get fixed. Uh, money says probably not. Money says they probably don't even know what the hell they did for mm. this to start happening because people are saying uh well there's a lot of conjecture going on in the thread because the developers are of course not saying a damn thing but uh, people are saying oh maybe it's um something you subscribe to on the steam workshop nope are you using cheats nope are you uh running any type of launcher that isn't steam to start the game nope and uh yeah mm. people are just much like Vin reinstalling the game, wiping everything, making sure everything's clear, not subscribe to anything on the workshop. Nope. Still getting the uh, custom content, modified data, whatever I, they call it. I, I, I got two theories on this. Mm -hmm. Number one, someone replaced the semicolon with a Greek question mark. <laughs> Number two, this game will now only run on Riser FS. Mm. <laughs> mm. I, I don't know. know. Maybe it'll get fixed. Consider that a little bit of a PSA. All right. Um, am I a good potatoes. rover? Can I come home now? Or potatoes? Yeah, yeah. No. You're stuck there. This no. is Surviving Mars. Um, this is 
this is kind of like the strategy game dream team at the moment because this is uh, published or it's developed by uh, Hamimont Games. You might remember them from such films as Victor Vran and Trop- the Tropico mm-hmm. series, mm-hmm. and uh, published by Paradox Interactive, who have done the uh, Cities games. So this is uh, this seems to be pretty good if you are your uh, city building fan, uh, and it's basically. Cities, skylines in space, Elon Musk's wet dream. He's probably looking at this game longingly and saying, soon, my baby, soon, Mars, I will be inside you. Um, I was watching Foxy play this for a bit, actually. He posted a video. I'll throw the links to that in the space show. Space basketball. Should totally check out Mr. Fox Talks. Yeah. You should mm-hmm. totally check out Mr. Fox Talks stuff. Um, it, it, was, it was funny, too, because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm watching him play this. He's like, oh, minus 15. It's so cold. I'm like, oh, oh you sweet summer child. Also, I, for for a, for a while, they were just playing country in the background for like the game soundtrack, and I'm like, oh, that makes sense because it keeps away Martians if Mars attacks taught us anything. Fuck you, right in your ear. I was going to bring up the yodeling. You beat me to it. Um, <laughs> plan. Uh, city skylines is. I just knew. Mm, it, it, okay, hang it's on. It's Hamamont but, returning to you know their roots. It's tropical on Mars. Yeah, but they let me down. They never made Sim Dictator, so I still got a sore spot. I I did look at it, and I was like, this might be 40 bucks. Yeah, no. Mm -mm, I'm good. (laughs) So. Mm -hmm. it's uh, Apparently, it's uh, it's got uh, mixed reviews on Steam. It's 65% positive, so it's not terrible. And apparently, uh, uh, 1,021 people who bought the game, legitimately bought the game, didn't get a key from somewhere else, uh, decided to uh, speak their minds. So maybe something to keep in mind if you uh, are into the, uh, I don't know, spreadsheet Hem- management been, thing uh, on Mars. Having has been pretty good about fixing game issues, though, especially with, like, mm-hmm. Victor Rand. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure that mm-hmm. if there are any, like, technical issues, they're going to get sorted, like, relatively soon. Yeah. Okay, so let's go from Mars to something that could, in theory, qualify as an interactive experience, as far as we know. It'll only be available March 30th, and it's called The Flood. Now, the I guess the blurb kind of says it all. The Flood is a peaceful five-minute narrative experience in which you pilot a little boat down a river as a general reminder that sometimes we should stop worrying about our destination and just enjoy the ride, the journey, sorry. No, I got more Chiba stuck in my head for a moment there. Uh... <laughs> No, it's uh, it reminded me as I read that it reminded me of uh, this game a while back where you quote unquote played as a fly. Um, did you, you wait? Wait, you wait, wait, was, wait, wait, wait! Did you get to play as Brindle Fly? Because I, I want to know the name of the game. <laughs> no, no, oh. no! It was just a teeny tiny little fly type insect that you would rise up and it would eventually go above the treetops and the game would end. And it was also five minutes long. It had no text on screen. It had nothing to it. It's like, it's stretching the definition of a game right there. Unless it's Frog Fractions 3. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm all for considering <laughs> games as art and any, 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 any good art's going to have some like experimentation and I think there, this is like an interesting experiment. But if you're a developer hoping hoping to like actually profit off this, mm-hmm. given you know the state of Steam refunds and the the, the two hour time limit, <laughs> it's not going to be comp- yeah. it's not going to be possible <laughs> at all. Unless your plan is to Inferno Cop and do something really interesting and get people on your team and then go release a, like a bigger game that actually has some gameplay. Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely a thing. So, um, have you uh, really sit back and just been dying to find a? Um, Opportunity to pay 30 wet stinky caches for another yet to be finished MMO that will be dead by this time next year. Then Project Gorgon is here to save the day. It's a fantasy MMORPG that lets you forge path through. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's 29, it's 25% off. Not excited about this at all. Um, kind of want to play it, even though it looks like something from 2002. Maybe. If I'm uh, well, see, I've seen some of those buildings on the screenshots before. Uh, d- those are not original uh, assets, so to speak. <laughs> l- l- listen, 
it, it says right in the trailer that you got to temper your expectations because from the minds of Asheron's Call, Star Trek Online, and EverQuest 2, all MMOs, that failed. So miserably you should yeah. really been uh hold, holding your breath i mean star trek online is still running but that's because it's getting propped up and it's pretty much free to pay um but that said it does seem interesting it's one of those ambitious oh it's classless two moves uh if you pick a class it closes off a bunch of options and gives you a bunch of mm-hmm. like role exclusive content which could be interesting of course again if you're not wow why are you bothering <laughs> Has anything ever unseen? No, I guess not, man. It's just no, 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 and that's been going on for well over a decade. Um, yeah, hmm. the, the, thirteen and, and that's ye- thing, like no? run- fourteen years. Sorry, <laughs> run, run, and running <laughs> MMOs is like a super fucking expensive proposition too. Unless yeah. you got Activision money, you are you are not fucking with these guys. True, true. That's yep. the thing, man. People are strange, <laughs> but sometimes life is strange. Er, yeah, that, that, good segment, old man Ben. Good segment. Yay, <laughs> pat yourself on the back. Yeah. A uh, Squeenix title because Feral has, uh, well, they're going to bring you before the storm. That's right. It's going to be coming to Mac OS and Linux OS. And only what I can d- describe as punishment for getting the vulcanized Tomb Raider. <laughs> we will also get this. I'm, I know that this is some people's jam get down with it and i mean it's bafta award-winning series not my cup of chainsaw by any any stretch of the imagination but uh, we're gonna get it i i think i can safely say this came to the surprise of absolutely no one though nope <laughs> i guess feral giveth and feral boreth to death where's tomb raider feral they're working on it man i mean <laughs> no, they they have, they have many teams, and and listen, I will take Life is Strange any day over some David Cage bullshit. So it's you know I've not by far not the worst. Here, here's point the thing: like adventure. I, I'm not. I mean, when you put it like that, sure, but I still don't fit into that particular pair of pants. Oh, that's cute. I like it. Oh. <laughs> but here, yeah, here, here, here's the thing though. It's like it's it's not the worst point and click adventure game I've ever played. And at least Feral is like rocking on being consistent with the series that they're porting. Aspire's been pre- was pretty bad about that because they um especially with the Bioshocks because they like got the Mac contracts but they were unable to secure the yeah. Linux contracts. At the very least, Feral is staying the course. But we got some Aspire news coming up in the next section. But mm-hmm. I got, be- be- before before I tease you, I, I've, I this, that's just like a ball tickle. Because uh, we, we we still got some stuff left in the Steam section. Just I e, just just one more. Just just the tip. The Raven Curse of the No No No. It's just the Raven remaster. <laughs> oh, bring it back a it third is, time. Uh, <laughs> back, here I am, back from the dead. <laughs> uh, no, this is um, this is the Raven. Uh, it's a point and click adventure game. We talked about it a while ago. This is the brand new remastered edition. It has um. A, a, a bunch of graphical fidelity enhancements. It doesn't look like complete smashed ass. Um, it's and if you, if you enjoyed the uh, the so you can play as a the, raven uh, or raven. as a gun, right? No, <laughs> see, I, I, see. The first time I saw this, I'm like, wait, hold on, Highlander the Raven, that you know, crappy Highlander spinoff that never happened. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, like though, good. <laughs> Good, 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 good on the devs for giving a uh, free copy of this to people who actually bought the original Raven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that's actually always nice was. to see. Uh, King Art, uh, of all your games, uh, Legacy of a Master Thief wasn't exactly the one I was looking for—a remake um, or even a sequel, an improvement, something. You know, uh, if you released something else for along the lines of the Dwarves or. Black Mirror, not that one. Uh, something like that, because those games were actually interesting. Uh, the the mirror, Black Mirror was a bit... Um, uh, Pedro, odd. you're making me want bacon now. <laughs> <laughs> but I would totally love to see that particular concept that you guys introduced with that game explored. And, well, I'm always down for some more dwarves. Why not? Show title. I'm always down, down for a part of it. Again, Pedro Mateus, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, NVIDIA has some, uh, some new drivers, and they're not 
so uh so hot and the smock has has like a, a release date no no it doesn't never <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we may have some <laughs> good news for you. May have. But before we do that, we have some bad news for you. Jordan, take your clothes off right now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Been, okay, seriously, you've been using that joke for like the past three weeks. Get a new one. God damn it. What do we pay? Okay, we don't pay you, but why do we keep you around for? There you Anyways, go. Anyways, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click the support button. We can't do this without you. We literally can't. We would go broke because we're very, very poor individuals working in the coal mines 24-7 to bring you the latest in linux goodness and also Black Lung. Um, you can uh, you can click on some Amazon affiliate links. We got some uh, Humble affiliate links, uh, New Egg affiliate link. We got Donato buttons. We got Amazon wish lists. Ben will tell you about the wish list later. And we also got our Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you get all sorts of goody goodies like Discord access, early na- our early show note access. Uh, you can even submit stories to the show notes. You get your name in the credits. You get uncut VODs. You can even buy your way onto the show. All sorts of ways you to give us money in exchange for perceived but wait there's more yeah wait oh, no, oh, no, the, no 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 i'm not really i just thought i'd say that in there it sounded like a, it was a value add man it was like but oh. damn it billy mays then <laughs> Bill, billy mays <laughs> billy mays here <laughs> billy mays here to think tim uh which reminded us we have a paypal button <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, what? It's been it's been a long, a long, long year. And um, Mr. Tim, that's with two M's, uh, sent us in a PayPal donation. Thank you, sir. I mean, that's uh, that's great for people. It's like, screw all this business. I'm just going to give you cash on the barrel. That works. We're definitely putting everything back into the show. We got a gang of stuff that we're planning on buying. Thanks, everyone, shopping through our affiliate links. That's awesome. You guys are blowing us up, especially with the humble links. Those are great. We have a new egg thing. I don't know. I think one person orders through that. Um, cool. But yeah, <laughs> Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. If you're not a patron, join us on Patreon. That's how we can collect and do the most awesome shit. And we're aiming for a bunch of gang and new goals that we got set up. Go check it out. Maybe it's your thing. Maybe it's your nut. But hey, man, that's cool. Uh, what's Frank up to this week? Because we, we got a little um, thing going on here. And, uh, oh, he's, he's, Ooh, he's, he's, he's at he's the at, fair. He's at a carnival. <laughs> hey, man, you know, he. Man, I, I, want, I want some fucking corn dogs. Hey, man, if you want to become one of Frank's fuckos, I mean, if you pick up anything off of our wish zone, our wish list on the Amazons, you already have the account anyway. Why not? You can join the fine, upstanding cannibal wall. Oh, corn dogs, Frank, come on, watch your figure, girlfriend. And uh, end up, uh, I think. What we are got... you talking about? He's all skin and bones. Hey, man, we we got room for like well, one more bones on the 2.0 wall, and that's going to be a thing before we have to go to 3.0. Thank you, everyone, making come on, switcher, obey me, making that possible. All right, fill some time while I get everything set back up for the show. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we 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 got some we got some driver news all of a sudden while Ven is fussing. Uh, apparently, uh, this one this new one three ninety forty two came out on March twelfth, Monday, and apparently its only function is to fix a regression in three twelve that will cause occasional screen flickers when you're using the uh, full composition pipeline mm-hmm. or just regular composition pipeline. I installed it. Um, Ven had some issues compiling it. I did as well. I had a minor compiler version mismatch because I'm still holding out on the uh, 4.15 kernel. So the version of GCC I had installed was not the version that compiled the kernel. So you had to throw in the uh, ignore CC mismatch environment variable to get it to build on Fedora 26 with that uh, 4.14 kernel. It gives you a big scary warning, but nothing's exploded yet. Yeah, I kind of... um... This is, this is where I get fucked. I, I, I genuinely, my patience runs out because I'm trying to keep everything reasonably stuck on 17.10. So I'm waiting for the PPA to update, to install it the correct way. Outside of installing the run file on Ubuntu, as I'm sure if you played the home game, no, dodgy as hell. You never know what you're going to get, man. And this time it compiled and said, oh, everything, everything's uh, it's cricket, man. Which, you know, I, I had all the nerve pinches to pull it out and install it. Booted, and it's like, nope, not not, not having it, man. You just got to sit back and wait. 
Yeah, no, I'm sitting pretty over here. Well, pretty is a stretch, but uh, still waiting on the graphics drive for PPA. Uh, apparently, there's uh, there's been several, at least two, uh, releases for the uh, 1804 branch of that PPA. Mm-hmm. But uh, people still holding on to 1604, 1710, whatnot. N- no, no mm-hmm. love coming from there. Which sucks. Come oh, on. Man. It's like the only... <sighs> I don't know. I just like it to work. It'd make my life a lot easier. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm, 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 well, the one, the one thing I'm actually curious about this driver is, will it fix that freaking flickering issue with uh, Portal? Oh, yeah. So we could get back to Portal too, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's been holding us up. There's some like legit graphical glitches. Yeah. Um, mm. But yes. So I have, to, I have to run this page through Google Translate because I know Sprechen the Deutsch. Uh, this is from X, XX Hardware, which I thought was a porno site, but <laughs> apparently isn't. <laughs> Um, and in this poorly translated mess, you can find the origin. If you if you are a uh, German speaker, you might have a better shot at deciphering this than I did. Uh, but but uh, yeah, as according to Google Translate, uh, a couple models of the Schmach Zero have been announced, quote unquote, and they got some gameplay footage. Uh, it is the single most depressing video too. You can you can watch that. The link to it is in our show notes. Um. But they're, they're they're saying they can get uh, The Witcher Three at 720p at around 40 frames a second, Alien Isolation on low at about 50, GTA Five at 720p at 60 FPS, and so on and so forth. And watching this video, number one, the soundtrack they have to this makes it seem like the single most dull thing I have ever listened to. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, these numbers are pathetically low. This is not impressive. It's yep. like, oh, look at this on low settings. This isn't it great? <laughs> no. On no, low settings, not. on Windows. Yes, look at all these games we're technically failing at. We we can almost hit 50 most of the time at 720 <laughs> with everything cut off. Come on, guys. But, yes. you, but hey, man, you, you got to look at it like this, though. Um, Jesus, you can't even hit 60 in rocket cars? Jesus, what the hell's wrong with you? On- um, <laughs> here's the thing. At, at least it's going to be cheap. Right? Mm, is it? <laughs> it's cheap. It's cheaper than most steam machines. I'll give it that. <laughs> yes, but then again, this is a handheld. If they put it out for uh, $699, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, that, they're, they're, we're not being facetious. <laughs> this thing's going to run you 700 <laughs> wet, stinky caches. Oh, um. <laughs> Yeah, Monster Cavern's got a point, and the, the TDP with the APU and the battery, we none of these things surprisingly quiet they've been because, yeah, there's no, they're looking at this thing, the 3D renders, when I say this thing, there's no custom hardware on this thing at all. This thing is... Just, no, no, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's that stock uh, portable APU, but... Listen, here's the thing. The joke's on us because if we don't buy it at like $700 now, in about 10 years, this is going to be like <laughs> Atari Lynx type shit. It's going to be worth like tens of thousands of dollars as a collector's item. Mm. We're just going to be sitting here like, fuck. Uh, no, you see, I have trouble uh, justifying like 300 pounds for the, the Pandora. Uh, even though it's been relatively established, it's gotten great reviews uh no matter who plays it they say it's surprisingly good and i still can't justify that asking price how the hell am i going to ever be able to justify 700 dollars for something that's over promised and not delivered it's not even under delivered well, the, they, they, they haven't delivered a damn thing the the crazy hard sell you gotta remember when this thing was announced when it was originally called the steam boy before steam said really really and they're like yeah. okay uh, the, the concept and the idea of the Switch didn't exist, and Nintendo's already uh, prototyped it, put it out, and now it's not even scarce to buy. And w- w- what's a Switch run even in Canada, man? Uh, sw- Switch is still about four hundred bucks. Four hundred bucks, and you get yeah, a portable four hundred and- bucks. Yeah, <laughs> th- this and, and, and you get Rocket Leagues and Dooms, the yeah. Vulcan, <laughs> and Skyrim. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> That was the thing. Let, let's talk about hot pockets. Ass pockets. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, man. 
they got a little blog, and it's Ass Pirate. We knew him. You know, they brought us the Borderlands and some sibs and all that. Just kind of getting back to the community, saying, hey, guys, we are still making Linux ports. Don't worry about it. And they're talking about, uh, what is it, Civ 6? That's the deal? Civ 6, yeah. Yeah, where's that multi cross-platform multiplayer so people might actually want to buy it to play with their friends? Still in development. They're looking at a March, early April for that release. So it's good to note that they are working on it for the Civ 6 DLC. However, there's not really an ETA on that. And uh, Pedro, you kind of had some things to say on... Yeah, because uh, they... Um... At the end of the article, they say, uh, okay, so you're a part of the Linux community, you're a part of the Mac community, and you'd like us to talk more about the, uh, do more for, you know, bringing games to Mac and Linux. And they say, okay, get in touch with us on the social medias and let us know what you think. Okay, sure. Uh, Besides hounding you on social media, Tangibly speaking, what can the Linux community do to help you bring more games to us? That's what I want to know. It's like something that we can actually do that'll help you guys work with us here. I I don't think they're going to be putting a whole lot of work into it because I think for better or for worse, um, porting houses in general, Aspire being one of them, uh, they're not really going to have much of a viable business model. See, even as soon as five years down the road, because we're... Unity, massively popular engine, and a distant second mm-hmm. Unreal Engine 4, not completely out of the scope for the original developer to go ahead and poop out a Linux port. It's not beyond the realm of belief, and I think Aspire, they definitely know this, and that's why they're starting to take steps to become a publisher, which we've seen with the um, Observer and the fucky little kite plane game. <laughs> they, they did that, but... In the same fucking breath, you know, the need for a publisher is also going away, Brad. It is. Yeah. Mm. Especially yeah. with as low a barrier of entry as a hundred bucks on Steam. Yeah, I I, I, th- I think at least for the interim, uh, we're still going to start seeing, we're still going to see like some stuff out of Aspire, but it's probably going to be mostly maintenance releases now. Uh, <laughs> again, what with um, they, them actually needing to secure rights and... Well, we, we haven't really heard hide or hair of anything that uh, they've mm-hmm. developed, just published. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right. Oh, man. Everyone was talking about Kubernetes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys yeah. are all about the containerization. This is actually <laughs> kind of cool. This is from uh, cloudplatform.googleblog.com. They're talking about open sourcing um, game server clustering deployed onto Kubernetes. And mm-hmm. That it that in itself is interesting. They have the uh, they have the thing called uh, Agones. I, I read it as Aragones, and I was hoping for some <laughs> cute little Mad Magazine style cartoons, but that is that is not the case. So their 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 basic value proposition here is running game servers requires a lot of resources. You need to have servers for authentication, for accounts, for the actual matchmaking services, and for be hosting the games themselves. Now, if you have this all running on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, inter inter server communication is going to be a lot faster theoretically because it's all running on the same box or subset of boxes that are handling everything. And uh, given given the fact that Kubernetes is really good at scaling out, especially in response to load, and you can do some neat stuff with Google Cloud Platform or Amazon and Kubernetes to essentially say, okay, if I got to back this up for a hot second, what the hell is a Kubernetes? Okay, (laughs) Kubernetes is VMware for Docker containers. That is the most basic thing I can give you. It's a thing for, it's a tool for uh, managing containers, for getting them all interconnected and talking to them and for scaling them up dynamically. Mm. Um, I, I've, I've been, I may or may not have been doing some research and implementing that for my own company. So that's why I have this <laughs> on the brain, which is why I find this really, really cool. But anyways, the, the idea here is um, by using the tools that Kubernetes has to offer, you can essentially always have server capacity because it will spin up or shrink down your cluster depending on what your load is, which could be good for high cost of game servers, especially for stuff like MMOs or competitive games that mm. during tournaments require huge numbers of servers and during non-competition times be like, okay, we can, we can deal with the bare minimum. 
it's a neat little it's a neat little thing. It's open source as well. So even if uh, Google shuts this down, someone else can pick it up and uh, carry on with it. Yeah. And uh, let's be honest. Even if Google uh, are the ones hosting your uh, multiplayer only games, it still sounds like a better uh, proposition than say having EA or Ubisoft or any of the AAA publishers because. They kill stuff faster than Google does, and that's saying something. Uh, it's given their current track record, I would actually be totally okay with Google basically holding on to the uncertain future of multiplayer only games. And uh, yeah, like Jordan said, it's open source. So even if Google decide, yeah, no, we're done, other people can take that on. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, even if you have something that the infrastructure to support these games, but you're still having to deal with a bunch of companies just being ass banjos going, nope, yeah. we're gonna, <laughs> but you're seeing more and more people are trying to fight for the preservation of the online component of a lot of yeah. these games, <laughs> even going so far as just like just reverse engineering and shit, which we've also seen. Um mm-hmm. And uh, th- this this brings up another interesting point about the, having everything containerized is you can literally just hand off the freaking Docker file or whatever to a volunteer group and say, okay, you fucking run it, and it'll just up and spill. Yeah, if you have the means, you run it. <laughs> so um, our, our sweet, dear Stephen, not that one, the other one, sent in... Uh, uh, well, he, don't touch me in the other one? Yeah, man. No, the other other one. He has access to our show notes as a patron. So he talked about uh, some citrus, man. And hardware shaders. Yeah, Citra. Not, not Citrix, man. I don't want to have to deal with freaking Logman or whatever the hell that shit is. Uh, I never actually realized that there was like a decent 3DS emulator out there. Uh, not even on Linux for that matter. But Citra exists. Um, if you want to play Pokemon Sun and Moon on a Linux computer, you absolutely can. And now you can do it much, much faster because they have released a new version with some uh, hardware rendering updates. Uh, previously, they had to emulate a lot of the GPU functions from the 3DS on the CPU, but now they are uh, using OpenGL, but now they have gotten to the point where they can emulate pretty much the entire GPU on your native GPU using OpenGL. And that provides, in many cases, up to a 200% performance boost, especially on NVIDIA. So yep. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's NVIDIA and uh, quite a few of the AMD GPUs also running on OpenGL also saw almost 100% improvement and uh, 26% uh, percent improvement on Intel GPUs, which means uh, Chromebookie over here might be- soon become my uh, Pokemon's uh, entertainment box. <laughs> mm. 98%, yeah, AMD's 47%, even uh, integrated Intel at 26%. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's cool. And I, I don't know. I, I honestly never looked for this particular emulator for that device, man. It's Pokemans. It's, 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 it's Nintendo has the stranglehold on Pokemans, unless you want to count Pokemans Go hmm. or a Pokken Tournament. But apparently, the new one is actually coming out <laughs> on the Switch. So you might want to hold out for that uh, Switch emulator to make a little bit more progress. All right. Flare. Mm. Uh, is uh, every, everyone's favorite sort of build your own uh, Diablo is uh, back? They got they got, they hit 1.0. That's uh, oh, that's shit. impressive for an open source project. We can review it. That is, yeah, straight straight up. Uh, and they have a they have a number of campaigns available too. Uh, their Empyrean campaign is good for prime time as well. Yeah, no, it's it's mm-hmm. very rare that we you actually see an open source game hit mm-hmm. 1.0. Uh, they've even added for the 1.0 an EM script inversion, so you can just play this shit in the browser. And this game emulates the style of Diablo 1, Diablo 2, point and click uh, computer RPGs from your. It's entirely open source, it's SDL, so it is all well and good. You should definitely check this out. I'm going to spend a little bit of time with it this week because uh, I like me some Diablo 2. No, man, I, and maybe, hopefully, this can provide a comparable experience. My one of my first thoughts when I, I saw this was, yeah, we, pretty much everyone knows about this game. I was like, man, this looks better than I would say comfortably forty percent of the bullshit we see on Steam coming out of. Oh yeah, game. yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, if uh, well, if your Google recommendations are mostly games uh, when you go on the Play Store, like they are for me, uh, chances are Google's probably recommended to you Exiled Kingdoms. 
it's actually gotten really good reviews and a lot of downloads on the Play Store. This is the engine it's using. Mm-hmm. It's using Flare. And uh, it's like, I saw the uh, the story on the show that's like, wait a second, looked at the screenshots. Yeah, I've seen this before. Exiled Kingdoms. Yeah. That's so it's, it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> 100% with that. I, I, again, big, 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 big props to the Flare Devs. Hitting one point, I was a big milestone. One thing we yep. do enjoy on this show is uh, when people just do some batshit insane stuff. They go a little cray ray, uh, cray cray, however you want to say it. And cray ray. <laughs> these guys have these people, these carbon based entities with Tomb 5, Tomb Raider Chronicles disassembly translated to see source code because fuck you, that's why. Um, yeah, it is a project to decompile Tomb Raider Chronicles, Tomb 5, man. This is uh, for, mm-hmm. what was it, the, uh, yeah, this is based on the PlayStation version, 2000. Mm-hmm. And uh, what do they have up and running, Pedro, the title screen, basically? Up to the title screen. Huh. That's literally uh, what they have. The Linux uh, build of the code that they have decompiled so far builds. So that's something. Uh, the they say that uh, they want to get everything up to the title menu, uh, and once they have that, they can get into the game proper and actually start. Uh, well, start getting into the meat of things because, yeah, no, these people are insane, and personally, I love them. Just keep doing it. Yeah, you're still <laughs> you're still gonna need a copy of Tomb Raider Chronicles. For the yes. game data, you'll probably have to do a little bit of eBay digging for that. I do like at the bottom, they got the fucky credits for the mm-hmm. fucky maiden developer uh, for MIPS and x86 assembly to see translation crap and a maiden branch fucking developer and a poo dumper. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, good, good, good on you for that. Yeah. I, hey, man. Uh, Narlin, uh, I don't know if this is the one they lost the source. And uh, disassembling, uh, kind of a great. Uh, I guess it yeah, depends on where you live. Disassembling right now is a gray area mm. until someone takes it to court and it shakes out one way or the other to set the precedent. So we uh, talked about when, when someone um, pays enough money. Yeah. The iron yeah. price, the iron harvest. Uh, last week or week before that, they were doing a Kickstarter. Uh, they made it six hundred thirty-eight thousand out of a four hundred fifty thousand dollar goal. Still twenty-seven days to go. I think they're going to do all right, Brad. I think they're going to do all right. But they were straight out on the, uh, because when when I actually do go to a Kickstarter page, I look at it and control F Linux, control F demo, two things I look for. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing the search for this, they're like, Hey man, we've supported Linux with all of our other games in the past. So you're rightful to be looking for that. However, uh, they clearly state, and it's like, this has got a multiplayer setup on it. We don't know how that's going to play out. So we can't guarantee you a Linux port. And they're saying that up front, Carmageddon stainless. Yeah. Uh, they say they're going to evaluate it at a later time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do hope though, that that means that they're actually going to use an engine that has cross platform support and not have to reverse engineer a bunch of other shit. Well, we've been doing this long enough. I can look at this. I mean, this is fucking Unity, so I don't know how. No, they say they're going to evaluate it at a later time, so that means they're going to build it for Windows and then see how easy it is to poop out a Linux version. They're going to do that and cross their fingers and hope they can talk to each other. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which is something we've unfortunately seen multiple times. uh, But... I just wanted to give that a mention, not necessarily a warning, but that's something you should definitely be aware of if you're buying into this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's the thing, man. But I, I say good on them for doing that. Yeah, be upfront about it. That's all we ask for. I, yeah, because when you're not upfront about shit, I tend to get a little angry. Carmageddon. Yep. All right. I, I got I to gotta pull this up. Watch them run, watch them fall, watch them try to pat, catch a ball the olympics <laughs> so uh the, the, those of you who get the, the, the those of you who got that one good get on yet so this is from ars technica link this in our show notes as usual uh, <laughs> so there is talk by the ioc about including some esports in the olympics because let's be real this stuff is actually physically demanding to sit there um and you know think very hard press much keys to get repetitive strain injury there there's some like legitimate 
physical activity involved here. Don't you, man. You can run like head unquote. first into a wall. Absolutely. <laughs> Controller uh, throwing. <laughs> it's 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 diving, man. No, uh, but the the main the main concern is that the IOC doesn't want to pr- promote a culture of violence. They want to be about unity and what have you. So they shouldn't make their games on unity. No. Um. But uh, so they they're evaluating if they're going to do an esports section. They can't really be promoting violent games, which is a little unfortunate because a lot of uh, a lot of games that have multiplayer are quite violent. I I will got I do, I do got to say though like. Rumble drop shot as an Olympic sport would be absolutely hilarious. Mm-hmm. It would be one thing that I would actually watch the Olympics for. <laughs> or, 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 or you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe some golf with friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that suggestion coming from you that that that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but you do bring up a good point in that uh, they already do have some violent sports being currently featured in the olympics mm-hmm. yeah, uh, they, they, yeah they got they got fencing they got judo i think they i think they bowling boxing, yeah. yeah yeah the bowling is a contact sport man. <laughs> don't with yeah don't fuck with don't fuck with that jesus um so it, it's i mean maybe it'll spur the development of like competitive non-violent games because i think that's a space that isn't really explored well, i just like the idea that think... we are definitely be th- thinking about esports into the olympics now the what are the reasons is like all right let's put this into the show are they going to limit what operating system you're able to compete with uh they're probably going to have to set a standard for that yeah because you <laughs> want <Windows>. if you want <laughs> it, yeah Probably, no, yeah. My, my, to my, Microsoft's gonna be a like competitive. Hey man, scene. oh god damn! When 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 um Clippy is the new Olympic mascot, I was like, oh okay, I guess that um. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's Clippy tangled in the Olympic rings. Because like, here's the thing: Microsoft will be like, yo man, we're gonna sponsor the Olympics. We'll we'll dump like a hundred million dollars at you, but you gotta make it esports yeah. thing win this only. Why is Cortana <laughs> all over things? I don't understand. Yeah, you know, Cortana's the one handing out the medals. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I, because, I mean, uh, to the point that Sildat is also uh, bringing up in Chat Realm, it's uh, there are plenty of violent uh, sports being currently featured in the Olympics, and you would think for like the genre that actually created the the whole competitive scene, which is fighting games. How are you going to draw no, I, actually I'm there? <laughs> I, I I I will call bullshit on that because Donkey Kong, competitive scene, Pong, competitive scene, Space hey. Invaders, competitive scene. <laughs> in the east, sure, okay, you got a point there, but in the actual esports as we call them today, that was fighting games. I get the medal uh, now, bitch. I get the medal. <laughs> Gold. Oh. Yeah, so conventions like uh, Ego and others, it's been fighting games for years long before esports was even a mainstream uh, term. It's uh, it, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It, it, esports, it's, it's Olympics. Funny. That's crazy. Uh, not as crazy as this damn show, but probably as crazy as the review coming up next oh god could you imagine licks game cast as an olympic sport my god It'd be beautiful yeah coming coming up next we uh compare to the paste brands because i want my teeth to be super pearly white and pedro smokes and drinks a lot of coffee so he could probably use some uh, dental work too smokes coffee your dentist mm-hmm. smokes coffee Nine out of ten dentists recommend that you use Unity for your game developments because then they can make a lot of money putting in teeth or replacing <laughs> teeth that you have pulled out in the development process. Just extra this teeth. Is, uh, cr- <laughs> yeah, this this is Aquafresh or Crest rather. It's a it's a game developed on Unity, developed by uh, Eat, Create, Sleep. You can pick it up for around ten of your local let sticky currencies. Uh, what is it? Become a god in this indirect god sim. Influence to try to control your followers using commandments, but beware. Free will leaves them open to interpretation. Will you create a flourishing civilization or lead them into cannibalism? 
devs did send us some keys for that, so thank you very much. We will subject Krelm Toothpaste, best way to fight cavities in international communism, to the chairquisition. Uh, one chair means that's crap, two chairs means it's math, three chairs means it's pretty good, four chairs means that it's awesome. We got our categories of dooms and equals to Shiny sounds <laughs> yeah. Yep. fun. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't watched the acquisition before, this is where we take a game, we apply some of these chair rankings to it after we discuss it, play a little bit, do a little bit of QA that maybe the developer should have done before pushing it out to the Steam store. So let us kick this off. Ven, how did you like closing this game? Oh, man. Let me <laughs> let me tell you about it. Over here on the Humbuntu 1710, um, Ryzen 1700, 980 disc, well, powered, UHD displayed. Check this out. So let's just let's talk about performance real quick. 2160p, 3840, 2160, you're going to be getting on the highest setting about 30 to 45. Not really playable. Crank that down to 1080p, you're going to be getting 55, 180. Kind of playable. Look at the game. You see the game right now? You're like, okay. Yeah, this thing's having mood swings for frame rates, man. This is some old school Unity shit I haven't seen in a while. Um, save games. If you're saving a game in this motherfucker, I had enough time to tab out, open the console, type in HTOP, and I'm like, are you still working, Brad? It's like, I saved a game. You know, it was like uh, it had a bunch of extra teeth or some shit. Maybe this game does. And yeah, man, to your point, this shite don't close, yo. You give it the Vulcan nerve pinch, that old Alt F4. It's like, ah, I'm going to hang. I'm going to freeze. I'm like, really? Can, yeah, that shit's real. So you got to tap that exit button if you're going to close this. Um, it is properly multi-threaded, taking advantage of all 16 available threads on the 1700, and I can report both full screen and windowed mode. Work as expected. But, if I can't nerve pinch my way out of your fucking game, you're gonna lose a chair on that. How about you, Pedro? Oh, yeah. Um, I had actually, when I read your thing in the notes, like, wait, just Alt F4... Alt F4 freezes the game? No, th there's no way. Oh, shit. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Over here with the uh, Ryzen uh, 5 1600 on Ubuntu 1604 with the GTX 1080, the frame rate's all over the place. Seriously. It goes from, like, 50 all the way up to 200 in, like, that. And uh, the save times, you already mentioned this too, but it's like Okay, you're saving the game. You've been saving the game for the past 30 seconds. What are you doing? I got up, took a piss, washed my hands, came back, still saving. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, uh, something's off here. I'll give it three chairs. Jordan? Yeah, I didn't have the game crash when I alt f forward on Fedora 20 uh, 664 bit. What happens is the window goes away, but the process doesn't die. <laughs> so I... <laughs> So the, I, I was playing it a bit on Thursday morning. Get up, walk away, come back. Why do I have 10 hours logged on this game? <laughs> PS, oh, oh, oh. Did it progress the game? No. Oh. Mm. Yeah, and th those save times are pretty rough too. My God. It's like they are saving these to a remote hard drive that is on a network, that is on a NAS running like a 2600 RPM hard drive that is bound to like a 10 megabit uh, Ethernet. Nick, like connected I, I over a com port, yeah, yeah, over, over some like fucking serial port, man. I don't, I don't even know. Um, I mean, it runs all right uh, on on Intel land with the i seven sixty seven hundred K, averaging around uh, forty five FPS at UHD. I didn't crank it down to ten eighty p because I couldn't be asked at that point. Yeah, everything works for the most part, but goddamn, man, you got some technical issues. You got to sort. You get three chairs from me. And three chairs from us makes it three chairs from makes the working. How about some shiny and sounds, then? Give it to me, man. Uh, hey, man, you got polygon titties. No, that cannot be the show title. Don't even think about doing it. Um, and on top of that, the second most uh, MVP is menus upon menus upon menus. This is a cluttery fuck fest. This is, this is programmer UI right here, man. It's uh, definitely a thing. Highly confusing. The sounds got noped out of the box. I listened to the, um, just the initial poorly done reading voiceover. It was like, what, what was the direction here? Sound, sound like you're on opiates? Was, was that, was that what you're going for? Because that, that's what you got, but, um. I think, I think it's just ayahuasca. Maybe, man. 
Maybe. Uh, it, it, it reminds me of like a, a virtual fighter. Like maybe you're, it's just like an Isle of Clarkson's <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> oh and, my God. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. So yeah, technically it displays shit and it makes noises. So I'll throw two at it. Oh man, I did not even think about the virtual fighter comparison, but you are a hundred percent right. This is like yep. this is should have some like virtual fighter triangle people shit. I mean, the sounds are there. I didn't really pay attention to them because they just kind of fade off in the background as you stare at the screen and sort of doze off because there's not really much gameplay here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Um Everything is more or less clearly delineated. The The bad graphics do have the advantage of making everything more or less distinct. Um, but I will say some of these uh, icons, like I did, if you're not looking really, really close, you will not make out that ostrich is actually an ostrich. I was looking for a while for that one. So there's definitely, there's definitely some issues here. The graphics are good enough to get the job done, but they're, I, I guess what they're trying to do is some sort of like tribal African art style, except it doesn't really translate into the 3D space. Like if you're going to do that, maybe make it a little more stylized, maybe some cell shading, maybe, maybe make it like more of a 2D god sim. I don't know. Not this though. Two chairs. Yeah, man. I'm also yeah, looking at like, this is on Pedro's Ryzen 5 with a 10 80 and it's nuts yeah the the frame rate is going all over the place it's stupid but it the graphics themselves they're simple they're not really selling it uh on both the visual and uh audio aspects of the game it's it's okay i've said plenty of times that uh if you want if you want me to like your game, make the mechanics as sound as they possibly could. Convey that one mechanic that you're really proud of and do it well. Aesthetics, uh, narrative, those are optional. But here, aesthetics are the bare minimum. I guess they work. I can't give it one chair because it works. I can see things. I can hear things. I'd rather not see these things or hear them. But they're there. They work. So I could give it two chairs, but that, I, I guess a D is a passing score, right? D's get degrees, man. That's two chairs for man. Shiny and the sounds uh, from the controls. I mean, there's not really much going on because nope. it's it is a quote unquote indirect god simulator. So in a, in essence, what this means is you can give commandments and bless or denounce them, and that pretty much will indicate will give some hints to the ai who will may who may or may not will obey your directive so you click on things you proclaim some commandments you'll wait for about 30 minutes 30 go to 10 i mean the menus are all relatively laid out everything has a tool tip so you're not going to get completely lost in it so i mean i got i guess i got to give it four chairs there's nothing wrong with the controls yeah real quick nothing to complain about was logically laid out with your keyboard and your gerbil the q and e buttons do what they're supposed to fucking do which is a nice mm -hmm. change of pace um center gerbil button wrote i mean that i was like okay you got this the basic mechanics are down their sound is a pre brexit pound so i'll give you a solid four on that nothing to complain about this is not something i would try with a steamy controller, Pedro. Oh, definitely not. This is one of those games that uh, you don't even need the keyboard. Yeah, you could use the WAS, the QEDs, the directional arrows. All of those work, uh, but all you need is the mouse. You click and drag with the uh, left click, and it moves the camera around. You do it with the right click, and it uh, turns around. You do it with the uh, middle mouse button, and it pivots in place and zooms in and out. They need the hokey pokey. Yeah, <laughs> and you shake it all about. That's all about, man. Uh, four chairs, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that's four chairs, four controls. <laughs> we'll be seeing that Pedro, again. did uh, you... <laughs> yeah, poor Pedro, <laughs> did you have fun playing this game? Uh, no. No, I did not. Aww. This is like Populous 2 without the point. The point in Populous 2 being that you had a clear goal and a clear uh, path of progression. Progression in Crest seems to be completely optional, and most of the time it looks no different than staring at the screen, just waiting for time to pass. Uh, literally, it's you're not playing the game, you're giving the AI, literally, suggestions, uh, and 
they may or may not get to it. Uh, I'm always up for a game to change my mind about a certain genre. And ever since Populous 2, I've not really been into the whole God Sim type of thing. Uh, this isn't it, though. In fact, I'd say this is the quintessential uh, God game experience, in my opinion, uh, in its implementation, and it's uh, it's it's fucking boring. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that boring boring is the word I would use to describe this game. Like, hot damn, this is boring. <laughs> I understand how the mechanics yeah. are supposed to work. The tutorial explains most of the stuff. At least from a basics perspective, and everything, like I said in the control section, everything has a tooltip, so you're not going to get lost. You can sort of piece it together, but I am just sitting here with my thumb jammed like a fucking full three inches <laughs> up my ass at this point, because like I'm 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 feeling a bit of a prostate tickle here, because you you sit around and you wait. I get that. Oh, it's supposed to be indirect because like, oh, God works in mysterious ways, blah, blah, blah. But that does, that does not an entertaining game make, especially when you're really just waiting to see, oh, are people dying? Cool. Let's add another commandment. Oh, they hate it. Well, good thing. That was the thing that was going to keep them alive Bye, people. Uh. <laughs> Listen, I, you, you can say what you will about some of the grindy natures of the games that I play. Darkest Dungeon requires a lot of grinding if you want to actually have a party that will survive. Pokemon is literally nothing but grinding. Just take a look mm -hmm. at Divinity as we grind the same enemies over and over until we win. But at least you're doing something with your hands. I, I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs, <laughs> my smelly, smelly thumbs. I just got to give this one chair. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what did Crest do? Crest, well, it dropped me into the game proper. And um, with what that miserable excuse of a shite tutorial? Yeah, that, that's kind of what they hit me with, man. You know, I'm not a fan of hand-holding, but what the actual fuck was that? We're talking, you know, here's some menus. Here's a commandment. Go pick some fucking berries and uh, have that fucko, you know, figure it out on your own 18 minutes into the game. And that's where I would kind of tap that refund button, Brad. Is this a god game or city management game with a bunch of extra steps? Because I think it's the latter. New commandments. This is how you order shit around, man. They seem fuck all useless. The damn thing basically plays itself. Now, disclaimer on what I just said about that. Because daddy still don't know exactly what he is supposed to be doing in this game. Um, I gave you, Crest, I gave you 45 minutes of my life again. And 35 of those were spent randomly clicking about. Trying to make something happen. Spoiler. It didn't. Mm. At $9.99, even when it does handstands, this is an example of kind of getting what you pay for and still, still somehow managing to feel just a little bit cheated. So, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, as it turns out, you can still get a Strider uh, because even with one chair and fun scored well enough in the other sections that we can give it two chairs although i would say what's what's the, what's the negative opposite of the asteroid just like a straight up walter bishop <laughs> diabetes <laughs> that diabetes yeah it's just okay we'll give two it, we'll chairs give, and we'll give it two, <laughs> two chairs with wilfred brimley uh wilfred brimley says don't buy this game <laughs> we'll well, hang on is it wilfred brimley with or without mustache yes Power amplification, man. You gotta, you gotta think Dying about the consequences, Jesus. man. The consequences. You gotta be careful. You're, you're you gotta fucking be careful with that Brimley stash. Forces you do not fully understand. That, that's what we're here to do, man. That's why we. That's why we do the chair acquisition. <laughs> All right. Well, that that was that was our review of Crest. Looks like it's not too great at fighting international communists. Coming up next. Holy shit! We actually have some hate mail this week. That is very very rare. We're about ready to wrap this up, but we'd like to wrap you up with uh, loves and kisses with all the hate mail that we've been getting. Well, it, it, okay, but there, we have like two bits of hate mail this week, which is good. It's, it's definitely an improvement. Totally looking forward to uh, shitting all over the people who uh, <laughs> some hate mail. But uh, hey, if you have some of your own. By all means, go to LittyScapeCast.com. Fill out the contact form. It's pretty easy. Make sure to pick LGCU Weekly from the little drop-downy thing. 
Uh, fill out the rest of the form. It's pretty easy. If you want some relationship advice, you can ask Jordan. If you want to send us some game keys, like a certain developer did this week, uh, you can do that too. Just make sure to include three. So, um, yeah, well, speaking of game keys, let's uh, let's get into that. Uh, Patrick O'Connor, I sent him an email earlier in the week mm-hmm. because... Um, uh, he put out a game on Steam. Uh, he and a couple of friends uh, put out a game on Steam, Trials of the Gauntlet. And he said, uh, I asked him for three keys. And he sent back an email saying, yeah, we're going to uh, reply to LinuxGameCast.com directly. We're going to use the contact form because we've been getting a lot of uh, requests for keys. And most of those have been scams. And uh, I'm guessing some of those keys may have ended up on G2A and other such websites. So he decided to play it safe and actually send us the keys through there. And uh, he did good. He actually sent us all the keys. And he said, uh, good morning, Pedro. We've uh, recently received a request for three keys for Trials to Gauntlet through BrokenDinosaur.com. Trials to Gauntlet was a midterm project for the bullshit in-game development (laughs) at Full Sail University. Our assignment (laughs) was to create a Metroidvania platformer within only three months, so you will likely encounter some bugs, mostly graphical. Those are fine. Uh, We had five developers, two artists, two musicians, and a creative writer working on the game. Thanks again for your interest in the Trials to Gauntlet game. We hope you... uh, we hope that our game withstands your tests and that you enjoy playing it. I hope so too, Patrick. I hope so too. Um, not many good. games are not many games are capable of withstanding the chair acquisition. The chairs are rough and they don't use lube. I am just nah. gonna go ahead and say I have not watched the video until now. Um, yeah, the the still shots make it look a little better. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it doesn't it's kind look of terrible com- comparatively yes, speaking it's... with what we've been getting on Steam lately. It doesn't look terrible. That was the, the sole reason I shot him an email. It's like, yo, can we have some keys? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, let, let, well, this thing. They're they're going to do trading cards uh, eventually. You made with the keys. There's your plug. That's the thing. Maybe we'll get around to it. There there might be a sweet sweet day. When we run out of crust. All right. Uh, up next. Uh, up, up next is from uh, M&M's. Uh, apparently, Marshall Mathers is uh, very upset. Says, okay, hate mail. Why don't you insults cover some expletive long form RPGs, you insults? May your relation <laughs> get disease. Good day. Um, we do actually cover long form <laughs> RPGs. Uh, they're not common. I mean, but West of Loathing's one. Uh, we talked mm-hmm. about, uh, Shadow, we talked about at least one uh, of the wasteland two. Uh, one, one, one of the shadow runs. Um, we yeah, did pillars, uh, of Eternity. pillars of eternity. We, we, yeah, we we have this series on Thursdays where me and some other jerk play a long form RPG. <laughs> so we, we we got we got some coverage. Hey man, in all yeah. fairness, uh, Pedro and I play an RPG every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Silent protagonist, dis dis. Yeah. Yeah, silent protagonists. Mm-hmm. They're not so silent, yes. Uh... <laughs> but absolutely check so, out Divinity on Thursday. We need the views. Yeah. Divinity Original Sin uh, is a very long form RPG. We also covered, uh, what was it? Uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. And uh, I, yeah, I've uh, I've been uh, talking a lot about uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. That too is very Tor- long uh, form. Yeah. Torchlight. <laughs> Torchlight. Yes. Yeah, it's more a hack and slashy, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's an it's a Diablo like that's an RPG. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, up next we have uh, Sonic Sonic Rain Boom Twenty Four. <laughs> Uh, giving us this masterwork of criticism. He says, You fangirl apologist going to comment on the <laughs> NVIDIA GPP scandal? Keep sucking that Lowe's source cock. Yes, scandal. <laughs> Scandalous. Scandal. Oh, right here in River <laughs> City. Whatever we so, can do. So, I, 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 I mean, like, so for, for those of you who aren't aware of what's going on, NVIDIA is creating some hardware partner program that basically says if you want to get a bunch of cool shit for product integration and like actually making fab cards 
got to kind of be exclusively NVIDIA for whatever branding space you uh, mm-hmm. you create. And people are saying, well, this is going to make it so that GPU manufacturer or, yeah, the card manufacturers themselves, not the GPU manufacturers, uh, will start dropping AMD. That's not going to happen. Hmm. I don't know, man. Like, I was uh, watching, uh, what is it, uh, Linus Tech? Uh, what is that show they do on Fridays? Uh Oh, uh, the podcast. Uh, yeah, the podcast. The Wan Show. I used to- the Wan Show. Yes. <laughs> they do that. And he was talking because I know that he's had some relationships with NVIDIA and all that. And he's like, yeah, they put this shit under NDA. And he's like, I he's like, I have not talked to anyone involved with NVIDIA or anything like that. And the second point is I'm not always honest with everyone. Um, <laughs> this could be a thing because one of the things that's been brought up was if you're going to be doing nvidia like your gaming series it's all got to be nvidia from now on or you know that next time you need some nvidia gpus uh maybe we'll have a little bit of a shortage evga or anything mm-hmm. like that uh it's asus gigabyte whoever. right yeah. uh I don't know, man. I don't fucking play teams. I don't think this has anything to do with open source or closed source or anything like that. This is just a soulless corporation being a soulless corporation. If AMD was in the position to do this, they fucking would. Now, NVIDIA apparently has a track record of doing some smitey dick shit like this. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I can see the point of view. I can see why people are pissed because this is not consumer friendly. This tends to benefit NVIDIA and NVIDIA only. Uh, They did this, even though they're market leaders, they, when it comes to GPUs, they own the market. But they did this in response to Intel and AMD getting together to release the um, Cavi Lake G processors which have an intel processor and a vega gpu integrated in the same chip that i guess i that put nvidia yeah, and no, kind no, of, i'm uh, going to save you that you mean in the same package giggity in the same package yes <laughs> uh intel is going to cleverly wrap that uh amd gpu in whatever proprietary crap they can so that it doesn't interfere with anything it doesn't have to but yeah nvidia saw this and they said we have nothing to compete with that and they don't mm-hmm. outside of the arm tegra uh chips they really don't and this is what they came up with was it a good idea fuck no uh is it going to make people hate them i mean here you are asking this question so yeah no uh this uh, GeForce Partners program, it's it's got a sour reputation out of the box. And unless NVIDIA comes out and they actually lay everything out on the table and they show people that this, whatever they're doing, uh, is coming from a genuine place of concern for some reason, which I doubt well, they will be able to. I'm going to chime in and say this is like one of the more chilling things about this is... You know, a lot of people have allegedly, we're throwing the word allegedly, uh, uh, assumed about some of the more draconian bullshit in Mm -hmm. what they're actually signing up for is the damn radio silence from every, all the partners going, we're not going to fucking talk, say shit about NVIDIA because NVIDIA NVIDIA could fuck us hard. And yeah, uh, they they, they can. That's (laughs) that's what happens when you have a business reliant on other people's technology is that you have the pair, the company that whose technology you're relying on will be like, Mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe we're going to extort you because we don't necessarily need you guys. It's nice. It's like, hey, man, you know, uh, extortion's a big word. Uh, How about, about, you know, we say for protection, you know? uh, Yeah, it's a lovely (laughs) graphics card. It'd be a shame if its knees were broken. Right. Oh no! Yeah. Hey, I don't think we're gonna do better than that. If you want to send us some hate our way, so we can embrace it and our normal love, please do it. Just tap that. You can leave uh, YouTube comments. Uh, just just radically decreases the chance of it showing up on the show. But um, I think on that bombshell, it's time to cue the music. You can always find us around nine thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time. You know it. Uh, the moon just changed back to whatever time it is. Punch in at a clock or punch a skeleton. I don't know. It's terrifying. I'm Advin Stone. 
on Twitter plus Vinstone, Google plus. I am Jordan Svung, Gamers Edition, Founder, Strix, 4G, <laughs> 980, 20,000, Radeon RX. You can find me shilling NVIDIA constantly at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Svung on Google+. Plus. Oh, yes. Sweet, sweet 750 Ti. Ah, ah. it up your butt. The 750 Ti. You know, the beautiful <laughs> thing is, is like if you ever try to sell that, I can just send somebody that video and they'll be like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like to buy the 750 Ti, you can find me at unaccounted4 on Twitter or plus with it on Google+. Plus. <laughs> and uh, about, uh, we, we learned a bit about the Olympics. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Olympics and teeth. Olympics and teeth. Fuck it. Let's just get the credits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, 750 Ti, you get to go back into the wrapper once again. For the time being. I will find some use for you sometime. Ooh, Penguin. Yeah, and then... And, uh... Until until you find a need to grind on it again, <laughs> gotta gotta make that penguin rain. Penguin rain, some stay dry and I'll just feel the pain. And penguin just rain, penguin carcasses <laughs> splattering on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you're just walking down the street and you get smacked by a penguin. Penguin <laughs> like, like, like a yeah, penguin just... flipper, an actual penguin right across no, your like, face. Yeah, the full on penguin, <laughs> like, like Fabio and that owl. Hey man, I mean, if you put it like the penguin in a properly rifled barrel to build up the velocity, the centrifugal velocity, you could probably fuck some people's shit up with a properly placed penguin. All right, new Patreon goal: five thousand an episode. We start developing a penguin railgun. <laughs> yes, shoot penguins at supersonic speeds. Yes. Well, okay. Let, 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 let's rephrase that. Shoot liquefied penguin remains. <laughs> <laughs> Five dudes.